soldiers have fought in high altitudes and battles in Europe during World War II and also as recently in Afghanistan. Looking over the horizon, the Pentagon is preparing for potential conflicts with China and North Korea, where these high-altitude fights may come into play. The U.S. Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine, otherwise known as Eucerium, has Pikes Peak Lab in Colorado, as well as other locations, to study how soldiers deal with altitude. They also have a controlled hypobaric chamber tucked away in Natick, Massachusetts, where Military Times editor Sarah Sicard and I recently visited. So can you tell me a little bit about where we're standing right now? Definitely. Uh, we are in U.S. Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine's uh, hypobaric chamber that's located in Natick, Massachusetts. Can you tell me a little bit about what a hypobaric chamber is and what it does? Yeah, definitely. So a hypobaric chamber um, in its most simplest form is actually like a really large vacuum. And so you actually suck out the air and this reduces the amount of pressure. And essentially we're, we're simulating um, the lower pressure that somebody would experience when they go to high altitude. So when a soldier goes to high mountainous, high altitude mountainous terrain, um, they can, there's various different impacts on their, their health and readiness. And so the first is acute mountain sickness. Um, depending on elevation, um, th this can be very, very moderate to very severe headache, nausea, vomiting. And if severe, they could actually be medevac. The second is the impact of altitude on physical performance. If you imagine that somebody can run or a warfighter can run ten, a 10 minute mile at sea level, now if they went to 14,000 feet, um, there would be a 45% decrement performance. So imagine now it's taking 14 and a half minutes. Uh, you know, really it can impact the ability for the warfighter to complete the mission and task. How do you guys sort of monitor uh, when you have people in the chamber? How do you monitor their health, their progress, um, and ensure that, you know, everything is done safely? Yeah, great question. Uh, the, the chamber is separated by into uh, two research chambers, a small, small chamber on the left hand side, uh, the large chamber on the right hand side, and what we call the antechamber air lock on, in the middle. Okay, and so the now when we when we conduct studies, um, the, the crew chief will sit here, and then we actually have uh, two other um, individuals helping to operate the large and small chamber. All the time, there's somebody on station watching the volunteers, and then we also have cameras. They're not on right now, but we also have cameras that are inside the large and small chamber, in which we're constantly monitoring the volunteers. One of our big focuses on is uh, exercise capabilities, and so we actually measure, you know, oxygen consumption, breathing other different um, the other variables that are of interest to us. In the hyperbaric chamber with regards to research, we, can, we also have the capabilities to collect blood samples, do various different types of testing in, in the chamber. In the last five years, we've been looking at prediction algorithms. So what that is, is we want to predict in real time which soldiers are most likely to get acute mountain sickness before they get it. And so that way we can prevent casualties uh, before they occur. So there's a huge individual susceptibility to who gets sick and who does not. And that was the main purpose of this study is to look at physiologic and genomic predictors of uh, being able to identify those individuals. One study that was done in the Towski Valley in New Mexico asked the question, who gets sicker? Soldiers who rug up a mountain or soldiers who make it up by vehicle? So some rucked up for about two hours. And we actually have analyzed that data and we have found that active ascent accelerates the time course of acute mountain sickness. So normally acute mountain sickness peaks within the first 20 hours after you get to altitude, after the first night of sleep. We found that when you actively ascended and exercised, it, it disrupted your fluid volume and then in the first night they were they were the sickest so we did find some differences in some variables between active and passive ascent but not in all of the variables we're also looking at the genomic profile of these soldiers dna everybody has it it's from birth it does not change but rna um, that could be upregulated or downregulated in people differently depending on um, what environment they're exposed to. So one of the things that we're really trying to look at besides physiologic monitoring is to improve the accuracy of these algorithms by getting a prior risk level on each of these um, volunteers, which is more like personalized medicine, so that we can then predict with more accuracy who is likely to get sick. So the Army scientists have collected a lot of data in the field and in the hyperbaric chamber. But how will army squads use this? 
the researchers are turning to at-home pregnancy tests for inspiration. So we want to develop something that either they can spit into or they can pee on. So we want it to be very simplified. So similar to COVID where you get the screening test for that, we want to have a screening test on a stick they can either um, spit in, pee on, that will give them, yes, you're high risk, medium risk, low risk. 